Yosef, happy Thursday. <laughs> Thank you, John. You too. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. Well, that's good because I have some mail, a question in from our, our listeners and our watchers here on our YouTube channel. And they want to know... Hey. This is it right here. They want to know what multi warehouse. Right? Is that like? No, a... you can't see the other side. <laughs> they want to know what multi warehouse allocation is. What is that? Why All do you right, use it? Uh... And they want to see what it looks like. Do you think we can do that today? I think we can. Yes. All right. Um, yeah. So multi warehouse allocation is used to uh, set up advanced rules to decide where orders will be allocated. Um, so. It's only relevant if you have multiple warehouses. Um, another no use way. case would <laughs> another use case would be um, if you are a client of a three PL um, that has multiple warehouses, or if you're a client of multiple three PLs. So we have some uh, clients that work with multiple Shapiro three PLs, uh, and multi warehouse allocation is used to determine which three PL will ship a given order. Cool. Um, so we do have if you have multiple warehouses and don't need any fancy rules we do have like the standard allocation which will look at things like what you know where the inventory is and allocate based on that uh, but when you want anything more advanced so things like um, distance uh, based routing uh, the ability to prioritize warehouses or uh, you know decide whether or not you want to split orders all that can be done with multi-warehouse allocation awesome all right so do you want to show me yeah, we can uh, take a look at that. So on my screen, I have our multi warehouse allocation uh, rules. So once it's enabled, uh, you can get to it from the from the shipping screen. Just go to MW allocation. And here's what it looks like when you first first come there. There's just that default rule. Um, that rule is enabled. Um, it can't be turned off. Uh, but you always want to have rules um, outside of the default rule. The default rule will really only allocate to a primary warehouse, there's no, you know, there's no real logic in the default rules. So, if you have it enabled, you definitely do want other rules to be be created. So, to create a rule, we'll just do create new rule, and then there's two sides to the rule. There's the conditions and then the actions uh, for the rule. So, conditions are essentially looking at will, will this rule be run on a given order. So, when an order comes in and we're processing it, we look at the allocation rules. And we'll go to the first rule and evaluate the conditions to see if this rule should be um, evaluated on this order. So the conditions that you can use on the rule, um, so you can see the list here, there's shipping country, uh, the store, uh, which store they came from, shipping country not equals, order profile, product tag, product SKU, order shop name, um, order profile and list, and the order, order contains tag. So, Basically, a way to identify, do you want this rule to, to run on a given order? Um, so one thing to note is you do not need a condition. So if you have a pretty um, you know, broad, broad rule set, you don't need to have a condition. If there's no condition, then this rule will run on every order. Another thing to note is if you do have multiple rules, once a rule runs on an order, so if I come back to the screen here, if I have multiple rules here, once a rule runs, that's it. The next rule is not going to run. So it's different than our automation rules, where multiple rules can run on an order and just goes top down. This is evaluated top down, and you can move move them around. But once it finds the first rule to run on, it's not going to run on the next rule. So going back to our rule, let's say for example we wanted to have a rule that split orders um, based on the country that they're that they're in. So let's say I say a shipping country, and I'll just choose uh, United States. Let's say in our scenario we have. Two warehouses, one in the United States, one in Canada, and we, we just want to set up a pretty straightforward rules that says if there's, you know, if the United States order allocated to our U.S. warehouse, and if it's our Canadian order allocated to Canadian warehouse. So we'll say if shipping country equals the United States, and then for the action, we're going to allocate the entire order. And there's a few options in how you, you're going to allocate it. So there's allocate back order, and then allocate from single warehouse and back order. Um, so if I just allocate, it really depends on what my, um, what my intention is for this rule. I can allocate to a specific warehouse, and then I can have a different rule that decides, well, okay, if a warehouse doesn't have the inventory, where should it be backordered to? Which warehouse should have that backorder? Or I could say, allocate it, but if, it doesn't, if it, that warehouse doesn't have that enough inventory, backorder it to that warehouse. 
So let's say I want to do that, allocate from single warehouse and back order. And then I could, for example, um, have this rule run on only specific items on the order. So again, this is just another way to um, change which items are allocated to which warehouse. In this case, I wanted to run on all the items because um, I'm, I'm going to allocate the entire order. Why then would you split it? What's a good example of a reason why you would allocate some items and not others? So yeah, let me, let's say I have certain items that I know these items always ship from a different warehouse. So I just want to have a rule that says, you know, these, these items just allocate to the other warehouse. And then I, I would okay. have a different rule for the other items. Um, now from warehouse, um, so let's I'll just say this is going, going to go to my primary warehouse. Um, and that just means which, which warehouses can be um, involved or can, can the items on this order be allocated to. So in this case, I just want to allocate everything to, to my primary warehouse. Um, now, since I only have one warehouse, I'm only allocating to one warehouse, there wouldn't be any need to filter the warehouses. But if I had multiple warehouses, maybe I have two warehouses in the United States. Um, so let's say in this example, I had my primary and my West Coast. Then I could have, then I have some more options. So first of all, I can filter the warehouse, which means only look at warehouses that can fulfill all the items. So this might be if I don't want to split the order, I don't even want to consider a warehouse if it can't ship all the items. Um, in this case, I'm just going to unset that because, again, I just want to allocate everything to a, to a given warehouse. Uh, and then if I do have multiple warehouses, I can also decide, okay, well, how am I going to sort these warehouses? I have my two warehouses in the United States. I said that this order can, al can allocate to either primary or West Coast. So which one should it allocate to? Um, and a simple one might be distance. So I'll look at the, the customer's address, look at the address of the warehouses, and sort of based on distance. Now for the United States, we use um, shipping zones for that. It's not like an actual number of miles. Uh, for other countries that don't have shipping zones, we actually do use, um, you know, basically geography and look at, at the number of miles um, distance. Cool. In, di in addition to uh, distance, I could do priority. If I choose priority, then I would have a list. So I can choose a priority list. You can create a list and say, well, this warehouse is my number one priority. Another warehouse is my number two number two priority, and it will sort of based on that. Um, and then I could also do just sort of by the amount of fulfillable items. So basically choose a warehouse that can fulfill the most of the order. So maybe maybe no warehouse can ship everything, and I want to sort it by the one that can. Um, they, can they can ship the most, and this can be sorted as well. So I can say, well, first I want to look at what's the most fulfillable, and then if I have two warehouses that have the same, you know, they, they can both ship everything, then sort it by distance, or then sort it by priority. Um, and I could just move that around very easily. Now, you can have multiple actions on a rule as well. So that would be, as I talked about before, let's say I wanted to say, okay, I'm going to allocate, I'm only going to allocate, this rule is just going to allocate, um, or this action will just allocate my items. Now I want some different logic for backordering. So maybe you want, you know, you only want to backorder to a certain warehouse. Because some people, you know, they, some companies, they may want to ship from a certain warehouse, but if they have any back orders and they're restocking, maybe they only restock to us to one warehouse, they don't restock to every warehouse. So you know, they may want to have different sets of rules or different actions for, for back orders. So again, you know, you can choose whether you want to do the entire order, or we didn't look at the look at this before, but we can do each SKU. Now each SKU would be a situation where we're evaluating each SKU individually. And that's where if I want to split the order. So if I do each SKU, I can say allocate each SKU from certain warehouses based on these rules or based on these, these conditions. And that's where it would actually split the order. So um, you know, if I did the if I wanted to allocate the entire order to one warehouse, I would do entire order. If I wanted to split the order uh, potentially to multiple warehouses, you could do each SKU. Um, and these actions can be stacked. So you can just you can have you know multiple actions. These actions do the way they run is evaluates that first action. Any item that was not you know acted upon, so either allocated or backordered, will fall through to the next one. So these won't change allocations, but if for example this was just an allocate action, then my backorder action would run on any item that was not allocated. Um, if this action had Let's open this up. If this action had, let's say, only certain SKUs, um, so we had a customer recently that um, 
had certain SKUs uh, where they wanted to allocate it to a specific warehouse. So that's what we would do here. So in this case, we would, all, we would look at each SKU, we would allocate it, we'll put in the SKUs here. So if this is, you know, SKU one, two, three, this action will just run on this SKU. And then you would need more actions below that to allocate the items that are not that SKU. So it is important that you have rules that cover all the items and all the, basically all the scenarios in your, in your order, or else there won't be any action run on it. It won't, it won't back order, it won't allocate unless there's a specific rule that covers it. So it is important to, um, you know, when you're making your allocation rules, make sure that you're, you're covering all scenarios um, so that nothing doesn't, just doesn't get allocated. Because that does happen sometimes where you know, nothing's happening, there's no allocation, there's no back order. That's usually because the rule just doesn't cover it. You know, so it's slipped through the cracks. Um, another thing to note is that once you create a rule, so I'll just create this rule and say we'll test. test. Back to my rules page. So when it is created, it is off by default. So you just want to make sure you flip that on, and then those that rule will be active. Um, and we give you a summary here so you can see what the what the rule is supposed to do. In this case, I have my US rule. We've talked about before I wanted a Canadian rule, I would just create an additional rule and say, you know, this rule is for orders that are shipping to Canada. Then I could do you know, the similar actions where I'm allocating those orders to a specific warehouse. Um, and again, because these would be um, you know, only only act only acted on certain orders based on the country. The order wouldn't matter here because the first one, if it was a U.S. order, it would evaluate it. It's not, it's not U.S. Ignore it. They go to the next rule. This is the U.S. rule, and it'll run that. So the order only matters if the order of the rules only matters if orders could potentially run uh, multiple rules. And then whichever, again, whichever one it hits first, that's the one it's going to run on. Okay, so basically it goes down the list, and if a condition is met, it'll do that one and then it stops. Cool. But if a condition isn't met, it'll just keep going down that list until it gets to something like here, your default rule, which yeah. has no condition. So obviously the conditions will be met and the order will be allocated. Correct. Correct. Very neat. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, allocation was, it can get very complex. Um, I definitely did not cover everything here, uh, but hopefully they gave a little bit of a, of a feel for what it is. Um, we do have some help articles as well that go into a little more detail. Um, yeah, hopefully that was uh, that was helpful. No, this was helpful. And I um, thank you, our, our valuable watchers of our YouTube channel, our subscribers for sending in this amazing question. Keep them coming for next time. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like this and Yosef and I hanging out here on our, our Thursday evenings, um, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so you can find out when we're doing this next time. But uh, thank you, Yosef, for your time. My pleasure.